y'all welcome back it's miss v coming at you with another video and today what we're going to be talking about is rotations in geometry so i'm super excited to talk about it with you guys if you guys like my previous videos on geometry go ahead and subscribe and like my videos and i will continue to post geometry videos for y'all so let's go ahead and jump right into it and as y'all know i write on my ipad while i'm recording so i'm gonna be looking down but y'all already know how it goes so like I said, today we're going to be talking about rotations, okay? And rotations is the last of the three rigid motions. So as I mentioned before, if you are not sure about what a rigid motion is, my very first video talks about the difference between rigid and non-rigid motion. So go ahead and check out that video. Um, but like I said, a rotation is the last kind of rigid motion. And in layman's terms, we call a rotation basically a turn, okay? So you're grabbing a figure and you're turning it. And rotations, we normally do them 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, or 360, which is basically you ending up back in the same place. So on my little coordinate grid, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what that looks like. So let's say we have a coordinate grid with my x and my y axis. Usually, let's say we have a figure over here, that little, I guess you could call it a rectangle, in quadrant one. Then if I do a 90 degree rotation, it's going to end up in quadrant two. This is a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation, okay? So the difference between counterclockwise and clockwise, just think of a clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a clock on here, but just think of how a clock moves. So that's your time hand, your minutes hand, and your hours hand. So a clock moves in this direction. That is clockwise, or CW for short. And in the other direction, we call that counterclockwise, or CCW for short. Because y'all know us math people, we do not like words like that. So try to use acronyms as much as possible. So you can rotate a figure clockwise or counterclockwise doesn't really matter. Um, the only reason, the only, the only time it does matter is when you have to figure out where the coordinates end up at using the specific rotation rules, which I'm going to cover those with you guys now. So like I said, you can rotate a figure 90 degrees counterclockwise, and that is the same thing. So if I go 90 degrees counterclockwise, so I'm going in this direction, that is the same thing as me going 270 degrees clockwise. Okay, so you can think of 90 degrees and 270 as long as they're going in opposite directions. So one is going clockwise, the other one is, sorry, one is, yeah, one is going clockwise, the other is going counterclockwise, then they're going to have the same rotation rule. So I'm going to go ahead and actually write out these rotation rules for you guys because they're super, super duper useful whenever you're talking about rotations in geometry, especially about, well, specifically about the origin or zero, zero. So we have, like I said, 90 degrees clockwise and 270 degrees counterclockwise are the same thing, okay? You end up going in the same direction. So that's one way you can rotate your figure. 180 degrees is the nice one. It doesn't matter if you go clockwise or counterclockwise, you still use the same exact rotation rule. And then the very last one that we have is when we go 90, to, well, I'll do 270 first. So 270 degrees clockwise or 90 degrees counterclockwise, okay? So those are the three basic rotations that we have. So let's say we have a point X comma Y. If I go 90 degrees clockwise or 270 degrees counterclockwise, what basically happens is those coordinates become Y comma negative X. Okay, y comma negative x. So the reason why I like to put 90 and 270 together is because if you separate them, then you're going to have technically six, six rotation rules to memorize, but really two of them are going to be the same. So I kind of group them together to make it easier to remember the rotation rules. I have trouble remembering, that, remembering them myself. I'm not really a remember things off the, type of my, off the top of my head kind of person. I'm very applicational, but... I like to group them together just because of that, okay? 
So if I have a point X comma Y, if I rotate that point 90 degrees clockwise, so I have to remember that with the camera, it's going the opposite way. So 90 degrees clockwise, um, what's gonna happen is the Y coordinate now is gonna be in the front. And then I'm gonna have the opposite of X as my new Y pretty much. So just think of switching X and Y and then make X negative. That might be an easier way to remember, okay? And then if I go 180, all I'm gonna do is put a negative in front of both X and Y, okay? And then the very last one that we have is 270 clockwise or 90 degrees counterclockwise. And that rule is do the opposite of Y. So again, switch X and Y, but now Y is negative, okay? So these are your main rotation rules that you're gonna use in geometry whenever you have to do a rotation. So that's pretty much what you use. So one thing I would suggest is writing this down. Um, if you're gonna study for a test or something like that, just keep writing it down until you memorize it because most teachers won't let you use this during the test because it's not really something that, you know, is on a formula sheet. Um, so just make sure you write it down so you can study that. All right, so let's take a look at an example and I'm actually gonna come up with this example at the top of my head. I do that all the time. So let's say we have a trapezoid. Well, I'll use the trapezoid in my last video. It's fine, I'll use the trapezoid again. So let's say we have a trapezoid and these are, those are the coordinates of my trapezoid. So let me go ahead and connect those points. That's my trapezoid. So this first point is at three comma one. We'll call that A. B is at five comma one. C is at six comma one, two, three. And D is at two comma three. Okay, so let's say we have that trapezoid and I tell you, hey, um, rotate, rotate trapezoid A, B, C, D. Trapezoid A, B, C, D. Uh, we'll do 90 degrees clockwise and we'll practice 270 degrees clockwise. So I think those are the ones that um, students and people struggle with the most, so. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do one or two points and then let you guys do the rest of them just because I don't want this video to be too long. So let's say we have point A at three comma one. Let's say I'm gonna do the 90 degrees clockwise rotation first. And I'm gonna change the color up so that we can follow it a little bit easier. So let's say we do the 90 degrees clockwise rotation first, okay? So if I do that rotation to that point A, if we look back at our rotation rules, remember 90 degrees clockwise is this very first one here. What happens is just switch X and Y and make X negative, okay? So switch them and then make X negative. I hope that looks right in the video. <laughs> um, but when you switch them, so that's, whenever I do this with my students, I always switch the points first. So I'm gonna switch X and Y, and then I'm gonna make X negative, okay? So all I did was just remember after you switch them, the second, the new Y should be negative or the opposite sign of whatever it was originally, okay? So that's 90 degrees clockwise with point A. Point B is five comma one. So again, switch X and Y, and then change the sign of Y, okay? So switch, change sign, switch, change sign. All right, so I'm gonna do 270 degrees clockwise with points C and D. So you guys can see all three points being moved. But what I would suggest is you can pause the video here and go ahead and find out what the 90 degree clockwise rotation is of points C and D. And I'll go ahead and I'll write it out for you guys as well on here so you can see that and so you can check yourself, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, practice points C and D, and then I will show you the answer after, okay? All right, so point C is at six comma three. If I do that 90 degree clockwise rotation, then C prime is gonna be switch X and Y and make X negative. So it's at three negative six. 
And last but not least, D was at two comma three. Again, follow that same rule, switch X and Y and make X negative, okay? All right, and then I'm gonna leave those A, B, C, D points there because you guys know the points aren't gonna change and I'm gonna call it a prime and purple. So that corresponds to the 270 degrees clockwise rotation. And remember, it's this kind of the same thing as the 90 degree clockwise one. The only thing is instead of making X negative, now you're gonna make Y negative. So still, I'm still going to switch X and Y, but now instead of putting my negative sign in front of what used to be X, I'll put it in front of what used to be Y. Okay. So I guess an easy way to remember this is if it's 90 degrees clockwise, the second row of coordinates or the Y row, change the sign. If you're doing 270 degrees clockwise, the first row or the X coordinates, change the sign, okay? So then B prime, again, switch X and Y. So I have one comma five and change the sign of X. C prime, pause the video if you'd like to, and you can go ahead and try that one out yourself. So C prime again, switch X and Y and make my X negative. And finally D prime again, I'm switching X and Y and I'm making X negative, okay? So those are rotations pretty much. These are rotations about the origin. So zero, zero right here, this point there. So these are all rotation rules about the origin. Now, if you do rotations about other points, one of the important things about rotations is that um, when you rotate a figure about a certain point, that point is gonna be the same distance away from the center of rotation, okay? And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more in my next video when I go over the properties of all three of the rigid motions. So you guys can kind of see how they connect to each other and you know, how to figure out what kind of rigid motion was done on a figure just based on looking at it, okay? So again, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like my videos, and keep watching because I'm gonna keep uploading as long as the school year's going on, y'all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I will see y'all in my next video.